Hey everybody and welcome back to Greasy Boy Customs. Today we're going to be working on a Ford and doing something pretty cool. We're going to be taking this Ford Galaxy 500 and we're going to be removing the stock exhaust manifolds for some really cool upgrades. Let me show you. We're going to be installing these awesome manifolds from Kugel Components, complete with the hardware and flanges and gaskets. These are really nice looking manifolds. I'm excited to get these stock FE manifolds off of this engine and get these on there. Let's get started. As you can see, the original exhaust is very flat, very restrictive, not a lot of help in the way of flow. So we're gonna resolve that with these upgraded manifolds. We're gonna go ahead and get these off first. We're gonna go ahead and take our plug wires out of the way too to give us some more room. And then we're gonna get in there and start fitting them up. Now, even just at a quick glance, you can see there is a huge difference between these two setups. Your stock one, very narrow. It's it's pretty much a two by four with ports in it. And you can see that these surfaces over time really just don't hold up. They need to be remachined, flush so your gaskets don't leak. You can see we had a little bit of a leak right there on this one. Then you move over to this one. Look at that, nice and smooth. They're also very beefy, so you probably won't see much in the way of warping or distortion in the setup. Also, as you can see, the runners come way out, more like a factory cast iron header. Better flow, better looking. Let's go ahead and see if this one fits on the passenger side, and uh, then we'll move over to the driver's side. Now, a couple precautionary things before we get started. We are going to have to jack the engine up one side at a time to allow it to tilt one way or the other while we're installing to make ease of installing the manifold a little bit better. With that being said, if you have this kind of overflow tank for your coolant surge tank, whatever you'd like to call it, you might want to go ahead and disconnect the top hose because as we're moving the engine side to side, it's going to tug and pull on that assembly and we don't want to make it leak any worse than it probably already is like most of these do. The other thing we're going to have to do is Cut some exhaust pipe off. This is the passenger side piece. This is the first little section of downpipe. We went ahead and cut that off and moved it out of the way because we're going to have to revamp that anyway to connect to the new manifolds. So cut that off, save it, but let's put it to the side for now. Now we slid the manifold back in first down in there and we were able to slide it right up in here. And look at that, we got some clearance there. We just stuck some old bolts in there for right now just to make sure everything's gonna fit. We're gonna go ahead and lower it down and make sure it fits nice. And there you go. It clears fine on the passenger side. You got enough of a gap, I can stick my pinky finger in there. So you got enough of a gap in between the manifold and your suspension arm that you're not gonna have to worry about it touching that while the engine's running. We're going to go ahead and grab the new hardware and get this one bolted in place. You'll notice the two center ports on the gasket are slotted. The manifold is slotted on the bottom the same way so that you can hang your manifold on the two bottom bolts and then you can also drop your gasket in. We're going to go ahead and get all the bolts in hand tight and then we'll go back and tighten them all down. a lot of fun watching me do this isn't it you want to just skip over to the other side and let's pretend you watched me torque all these down all right we'll do that and... And there we go look at that fits really nice we're gonna get all these bolts tightened up drop the engine back down it looks like we're gonna have plenty of clearance won't have to worry about anything you may have to move your dipstick over just a little bit but you can just simply bend the bracket a little bit to get it out of the way now does this mean you're out of the woods you're done with your exhaust well no because we still need to connect the old exhaust 
to the new exhaust. Luckily, I have some pipe that's already bent that's the right diameter, and I'm just gonna have to reduce it down to fit the exhaust pipe that's on here from the factory. Some other things you can do, you can buy pre-bent pipes yourself. And if you have a welder and you have a lift and you wanna do this, do it yourself. If not, just keep in mind, you'll have to take it to an exhaust shop and have them finish up connecting the manifolds to the exhaust. Any reputable exhaust shop should be able to do this work if you can't do it yourself. Go, nice and quiet, no exhaust leaks, everything's good. Look at that, nice and quiet, no exhaust leaks. Might just keep driving this car for a couple of days. Overall, this was a really nice kit. Everything fit very well. And aside from having to make your own connector between your original exhaust and your manifold, there's really not a lot of modifications that are required. We did have to relocate that starter wire. The post was also very close to the manifolds, but it's not touching in enough gap to where it won't touch. We just had to reroute that wire around the backside, and we'll go back and put a little bit of insulation wrapping around it to protect it from the heat of the manifold. If you have any questions about what we did today or the products that we used, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments below or email us at greasyboycustoms at gmail.com. And until next time, happy hot rodding. On today's episode of Crocodile Hunter, we gotta get this fucker out of here. Good God, he's fat. This